This week on the SA Rugby Oak podcast. The rest of the World Cup is trash. All the other games are trash. I don't give a damn about any of them. All the other teams are trash. Okay? The only teams that matter here are Ireland, South Africa. The reason we lost that game, and George, you correct me if I'm wrong, was coaching tactics. We shot ourselves in our bloody foot. We should have played to our strengths, and we didn't. And like you said earlier, fair play to the Irish. They just, all they did better than us was kick a few goalposts over, a few kicks, and they were quick at the breakdown. Welcome back to the SA Rugby Oak podcast with me, Matt, the SA Rugby Oak, and a very angry, very frustrated co-host in Tritime George. Yo! <laughs> I am feeling. <laughs> I'm trying to contain myself, but um, yeah, I'm just I'm not a, I'm not a happy camper this morning, and no, neither are my neighbours or my <laughs> partner or anyone who lives in within a mile radius of where I live. <laughs> to Cora, a lot a lot of shouting, a lot of aggression. Um, I was I had a you know baby on the chest for part of the game, so I had to control myself to the to the utmost. <laughs> But look, <clears throat> I'm just going to go straight into it, George. The rest of the World Cup is trash. All the other games are trash. I don't give a damn about any of them. All the other teams are trash. Okay. The only teams that matter here are Ireland, South Africa. Ireland number one in the world versus South Africa number two in the world. It was the battle of all battles for this World Cup. Fair play to Ireland. They just found a way to win. That, that, is, that is, if you can say anything about Farrell's Ireland, that's different from the island before. It's they find ways to win. We beat them in every facet of the game, except for the breakdown. And fair play, their breakdown work was outstanding. Every other facet, we beat them, okay? And we still managed to leave 11 points off the kicking tee, um, three tries wanting, of which one of those needed to go in. Um, to be honest... Very, very angry here. Not at the players. I think I'm not even. I'm not angry at the seven-one split. I'm not angry at the players. I think the effort was 110. percent I think the seven-one split made no difference whatsoever to us. Us losing it was not the problem there. We dominated in the second half physically. Uh, adding an extra back would have done nothing for us. The reason we lost that game, and George, you correct me if I'm wrong, was coaching tactics. We got it wrong. Russi got it wrong, and, and Jacques got it wrong, for going for stupid 55-meter kicks when we don't have a kicker, instead of going for our mall when our, when our first choice hooker was on the field and could have dominated those those um, those rucks, uh, excuse me, those malls to get us over the line. Sheer arrogance and, and just poor tactics. Love Russi, love Jacques. They got it wrong. And you're allowed to get it wrong. But when you've got 15 forwards in the match day 23, you must maul the dawner out of people. I don't, sorry, I'm getting very passionate, but you've got flipping the biggest beef on the field and, and I'm going to kick 55 meter kick with the Oakhoogs kicked. How long ago? I know you got some kick, kicks over against, or one kick against Scotland and I was cheering and singing his praises, but we had the 7-1 split against New Zealand and didn't play like that. We had a completely diff different tactical approach. We went, we stuck it to them and we went to the corners. Instead, I don't, was it mind games? Is it mind games? I don't, we never know with Rossi. Sorry, I'm getting very passionate. I need to just to calm it down a bit. But what, it, what were we thinking? It <laughs> what was made going on there? no sense to keep going for the pole. I get the ones that were close. Obviously, the yeah. conversion were missed as well. But to go for the poles at 55 meters out... You know what the worst thing was? As soon as that first one hit the post and bounced off and we looked like we had a bit of, you know, a counterattack, I was like, oh, Rusty's going to do this every time now. And he did. He did it again. <clears throat> we left 11 points out there. Now, let's take away six points for those long-range kicks because I don't think they should have been taken at all. No. Not without a guy. That could have been 14. Have, that could have been a Francois Stain. If you had a Francois Stain all day, we don't have mm -hmm. a Francois Stain, Okay. So we we've got to we've got to play the margins and the percentages. And if our percentages on kicks are low, why are we going for outrageous kicks? You, good question. <laughs> um, it it drives me dilly dilly dilly. It's I was 
I was sitting there screaming, shouting, and thinking, do you know what? There was a moment when we hit that, when Faf did the first kick and it hit the post, and I thought, ooh, we're going to score. And we'd all be saying a different thing here now if we scored off that. We would be. Yeah. We'd be like, oh, a tactical genius. But but it wasn't technical. It would have been the biggest fluke. We, we shot ourselves in our bloody foot. We should have played to our strengths, and we didn't. And like you said earlier, fair play to the Irish. They just, all they did better than us was kick a few goalposts over, a few kicks, and they were quick at the breakdown. That was it. We dominant. I looked at the, there was a stat that popped up, dominant tackles. We moored them in the dominant tackles. It, it, was like, it was like five to one. It was, I think, 25 dominant tackles, and they had five. Come on. We our were fi- all over them. Our physicality was absolutely outstanding. Our forwards who came off the bench outside oh, of scrum. outside of the line out were absolutely outstanding it worked to what we wanted it to do the seven one split worked everyone's laughing and joking about it not working it worked it did exactly what we wanted to do the problem is if you if you if you have a tactic to create penalties to create scoreboard pressure or to create positions to try to, to score and you don't score off the back of that it doesn't work so the seven one no. split worked perfectly Except we need a number two. We need a we, we need a second Joe's hooker that is a proper hooker, George. We can't have players playing makeshift roles in it. The, the, we let two scrum penalties um, in that second half, which didn't need to happen. One underneath our poles, which made it that we couldn't go for a drop goal um, or some kind of penalty. Not that we would have probably got that over. Um, Dion Ferry missed one, one line. It happens. Look. Dion Free misses. It, wasn't it does skew. happen. It wasn't skew. I even heard the Irish commentator go, Ooh, that's a big call. It was not skew. That was, I don't want to ref bash because it's a typical thing that South Africans do. Yeah, but yeah. that was not skew. That's a big call to make on that. I jumped. I hit the seat. I hit the light on my seat. I was like, Are you? I'm going to censor myself because it mm. was not skew. And to hear the Irish commentator go, Ooh, that's a big call. That r- enraged me. So was, I disagree with you. A... I disagree with you. I don't think we need another hooker. I think we we will get and no, uh, we will be fine with what we've got. We just need a kicker because we lost yesterday because we kicked miss. We missed points. We would have yeah. won if we got those kicks over. End oh. end of the story. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm just so angry. I'm arms in the, arms in the air. Angry. <laughs> I just I, I I agree with you on the kicker, and we'll come back to that. But you've got yeah. you. The reason the bomb squad worked, the, the reason it worked, was that for the first two years, we had Malcolm Marks coming off the bench, scariest hooker in the world. And the second two years, or the second 18 months, we had Bongi coming off the bench. The second scariest hooker to come off the bench, right? That was, anyone can throw locks out that have a bit of energy and do okay. I'm sorry, don't want to offend any locks out there. But we've got very dynamic locks in RG Slamon, but you can actually just send two big oaks out because it's a power struggle. Right? Hooker is a dynamic position. We've won games time after time and dominated world rugby to a certain extent, or when we have dominated world rugby under Russi, it's because we've had that, that you can give your 100% energy in 40, 45 minutes to the starting hooker, and the, and, and, and the second half could be 100% from another hooker that's angry, that's nasty. I think we need to bring Joseph Weber in. Yes, people give him rubbish about his throw-ins last season actually not last season 2021-22 get over yourselves he's had an amazing season with the stormers he played really well he threw a really good pressure line out against the aussies the guy is massive he's scary he's powerful he's athletic injure someone in training bring him in we need another hooker (laughs) just listen i'll throw another little scenario at you and you will probably disagree with me talking about bringing on the scary hook or whatever, fine. Let Dion Ferry start the games and Bongi, but he plays 40 and Bongi plays 40. Hey, and then Bongi finishes it off because that's when Bongi starts and you, you had the finisher coming on, to be fair. You had yeah. Malcolm Marks coming on in the second half to mood, mood, mood. Why not start with Dion? Who's a, he can pilfer. Obviously, big game last night, a lot of emotions. He's our age, a little bit older than us. Can you imagine if you put me on that field, I would have probably sh- pooped myself. But he did. He, he he's a 
flipping good player. I think start him, and I'm probably going to get told to bugger off. Start him and then bring on Bongi. It might be a bold strategy, but I don't think Joseph Dion, Job is going to solve our problems. I think I've got a lot of respect for Dion Free. I'm a Stormers fan. I absolutely love the guy. I think he's an absolute warrior. He's an absolute hero. But we are looking at this player who's 36 years old, who hasn't played hooker in 10 yeah. years, okay? With One year. these like incredible nostalgic glasses on, it's like, oh, imagine it could have been me. Imagine that guy that could have made it has made it, and we're going to use him. He's going to play in the spring box, and he's going to win, and he's going to pull. The guy is the thirtieth best hooker in the world. Maybe, maybe I'm worse. Not bad. <laughs> no, he, he's he's not a starting hooker in any of the World Cup teams that are in the top 10. He's probably not the second choice hooker in any of the teams that are in the top 10. That's already puts him at 21st, okay? Now you look around the rest of the world, you can probably find some other guys. As world champions, that is not good enough. Sorry. That's f fine, but uh, um, caveat, um, and no offense to Joseph Dweber, the only thing he's gonna bring is a, a bigger person because you can't, I don't see him pilfering balls and, He's and his throwing is inconsistent. And Dion got one bad throw, which was actually straight, and it was on the line. If he got that and scored, we would have been again, we would have been singing a different song. We're going, ah, oh, Dion, True. my man. So True. this is what I'm it's it's um, it's fine margins. And I I don't think we bring up Joseph Joe, but I think we keep doing what we're doing. Dwayne Vermeulen needs to start. Nothing against Jasper Visser, but Dwayne Vermeulen is he's got some other like aspects to his game he's got that dog um not saying jasper doesn't have that but i think i think uh, jasper I did, it, yeah. I, 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 we'll go on to jasper and Dwayne in just a second i'll just i'll just say one more thing if you want to go down that route and keep dweber sat at home on ice fine but then start marco van staden at, at hooker or Bring him on a second choice hooker. He's a better player than Dion Fury right now. He's more energetic. He's stronger. He's probably scarier. And they're probably just as good at throwing in the lineouts. So, again, we're putting Dion Fury in, in outside of a position where, is he even our best second choice hooker? I don't know. I don't know. We could bang on about this all day. I I, um, I think they both need to be on the field and they can bloody into Like we did with kickers. One minute this guy's kicking, next minute that guy's kicking. Hey, you want to chuck? You can throw in the line out if you want. You, This is this is where we're at at the moment. We're a bit... We, our dynamism, I can't even say the word, our, how dynamic all of our players are might be our downfall. Because yep. we, we're like, oh, we, we, we've we got guys who can do... play four positions. But master of... What is it? What's that saying? You're a... Jack of all Champion trades of one and master of none. I don't know the saying, but look, I think the problem the was one. we came up against um, Ireland. Oh. Who are, Ireland are a team that um, of, uh, I won't say the name, but a very, very uh, famous person actually said to me yesterday, Ireland aren't a good team. They're just very good at what they're good at, and um, that's true. Th that, they were that, just good at what they that, were good at. That's when you when we play against a team. Look, I don't know if that's completely true, but if we if we play against a team like Ireland, who are so good at what they are good at and are so confident, we need to kick back into a little bit more of our traditional play. And we didn't adapt well yeah. enough to that game because we. I still think we're a better team than that. Um, I think. You know, you talk hmm. about Jasper Visser, Dwayne Vermeulen. I think Dwayne Vermeulen would have brought a bit of energy off the bench, and I would think it was a shame he didn't, because I actually enjoyed Jasper in the in the first half. But the elephant in the room, watching watching from the stands, was was Andre Pollard at at an average of seventy five percent success rate. Um, we had twenty percent success rate yeah. uh, in that in that match. Well, so, what do what do we do, George? What do we do with Andre? Because Marnie, we, because hang on, Marnie Libok can't kick to save his life at the moment. But he's the informed ten in the whole tournament. Yeah. I don't think there's a better ten form wise, kicking aside, actual playmaker wise at the World Cup. He's been incredible, and he was great yesterday. He was, he was, and he, and that's that is the conundrum because he's he's. He, the way he runs the back line and what he brings to that back line, because if you bring Andre in, we're going to go back to 2019 
and which hey, we won the World Cup in 2019, so we can't we can't say anything bad about that. But we might go back to old tactics where with with Marnie, we've got do- cross kicks and this and that. And look, Andre can do that as well. He did it in Lions too, Mapimpi. He did, he did. I think. I don't think start Andre against Tonga because he does need to get into it a bit. I would still start Marnie against Tonga and bring Andre on. Um, okay. for maybe maybe let, give him a half. So Marnie 40 minutes, Andre 40 minutes. Or you could do it the other way around. You could do Andre 40. But I just think Andre only needs 40 minutes just to get into it. And Tonga's a solid, in our team, they play solid. Um, and it would be... It would be a good sort of dust off the cobwebs. Yes, he played a game for Leicester a couple of weeks ago, whatever it was. But international rugby is very different to Leicester Tigers rugby. So let him get a go. But I don't think we just chuck Marnie aside at all. <clears throat> um, we yeah. just need to... And a lot. there's a lot of haters about his... And yes, we lost yesterday because we, we missed kicks. Marnie wasn't the only one who missed kicks. He did miss the easier kicks. But wasn't... Well, technically easier, not really. The... I think what I what probably... I what I hate about the haters, right? It's a lot of hate flying out of my mouth right now. But what I hate about the haters is they are so rugby blind. Okay, these guys that don't that think Marnie Libok is the worst thing that ever happened to South Africa because he misses his kicks is are moronic. Okay, the problem yeah. is the coaches have selected a player who struggles to kick without providing a kicker in the team okay look at butch james 2007 world cup the way the guys talk sometimes you watch it and you think you think okay free ran the shot butch was another number 12 at 10 but the way the 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 players talk about how he held that defensive line and 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 how incredibly well he played during that tournament he wasn't the kicker it's okay to have a 10 look at all the french teams that have lost world cups that um, nine, that didn't have that didn't have <laughs> they're, they're number 10 kicking that's not a problem okay Marnie Libok is not the problem here the problem is we've no. selected our best player at 10 and not taken into account that we need an out and out kicker we were hoping Damien Willemser would become that he hasn't we were hoping Fuff could pick that up he hasn't it's look it sucks because if we'd had a 75% kicker a very average kicker on that field, it could have been really any hard. of those. Because it could have been a prop for all I care. Stephen Kitsop could have, could have if, if he can kick, get him kicking. But if we'd had that, we would have won that game. And Ireland would be crying now instead of thinking they're, the, they're God's gift to, to rugby. I just hate the fact that no one can watch Marnie Libok and not go, this guy is an incredible playmaker. Forget about the kicking. That is actually not his fault. The guy's trying his hardest. You're telling me a professional is not going every single day to training, thinking about it late at night while we're crying about the results. This guy is trying his best, and he's playing phenomenally well. This is why I, this is where I disagree with you. I think Andre Pollard needs to start against Tonga because we need to give him the game time, and he needs to play at 12 in the knockouts. Mm. Okay? So... I think you take Libok at 10 and you start Hundre at 12 and you give him 40 minutes and then you bring on Esther Hazen to give him some more game time going into the thing. But Pollard needs to be there from the beginning because Tonga, we should beat. This is not a, we need Pollard in the last 20 minutes to win the games from tactical kicking. Okay. From kicking uh, goals. Tonga, we should be putting 30, 40 points on it. Sorry should be doing it. And we're going to have to play a first team now because if Ireland somehow lose to Scotland, we're in a dogfight. So we have to beat Tonga well, um, who are, who, who've got some players. So Pollard, 12. Let's see if that connection works. Let's see if we can go into a World Cup final with Pollard and Marnie as a 10-12 as a axis because this is the only opportunity we have to try that. That is that is true. Um, so I wanted to disagree with you there, but it makes so much sense. Um, it does. I was throwing shade at my friend Damon Dallander before this game because I've been saying Andre says he needs to start. Damon Dallander absolutely ran over people yesterday. My yeah. lord! I'm yeah. surprised Ringrose was allowed back on the field. He was definitely concussed. No, I mean, he, I think it was actually a shoulder. Sexton, 
Yeah, but his shoulders connected to the neck, connected to the head. <laughs> you can guys. Um, no, um, da- Damien had a good game. Can I say something quickly? Yeah. Bandiaki got man of the match. All he did was make one break. All he did, and he got man of the match. I didn't seem to do anything else. I, I don't know. know. Losing team should. Look, if he, no, if he, if he, did, if he, he did, did. F all. <laughs> that was a hell of a break, though. Yeah, well, he got hell stopped. Did they score? No. I enjoyed watching Bundy play. Um, I had some quick. You're for a mid- big guy. Yeah, look, uh, he's. I didn't think he was that quick, to be honest. I haven't watched, obviously, but he, enough of him. He got away. He outran. A few, Damon, I mean, Damon Dallas is not the quickest center in the world, but he, no, he, but he burst did, well, through He still there. got reeled in. Let's not go over the yeah, top. Yeah, he did. Um, that's what, what the rush defense also gives you an extra five steps. So you, you look like you're a little mm. bit faster than if you break through it. Uh, yeah, true. Man for man, I don't think the, the um, South Africans... I, I will struggle to score any of our players uh, an actual bad score unless you're taking kicking into account for the people who, yeah. who missed the kicks um and for ireland i think they coped really well i don't think they mm, thrived they, did. they coped really no. well um but it's a good one. we're going now we're going into the playoffs let's assume ireland finished first let's assume south africa finished second um we'll be playing france They'll be playing New Zealand. Go. <laughs> I was going to say, I said it before this game. I said it, before, I think, at the beginning of the World Cup. I want us to have uh, France in the quarters because I don't want to play New Zealand because New Zealand are a World Cup team. They will, I'm, I might be shooting the gun early here, but they will beat New Ze- uh, Ireland. We I, can I, beat I agree France. with you. I, I, I agree with you. And people that I've spoken to, particularly my, my English colleagues who I've said I want to play France have kind of, they've not quite understood that at all. Now, I would prefer to finish top of the group. Don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these guys going, oh, you know, it's tactics and we wanted to finish second. It's crap. We want to win every game. No. And I would have preferred to win the game and mm-hmm. gone, gone first in a group and faced whoever was second in the other group. However, we're not in that situation. And now we get to look at either playing France a team who hasn't beat us in how long? How, who knows how long? Okay, a team that as soon so as beat us f- last year. Excuse me, France beat us last year. <laughs> yeah, sorry, by three part, but but <laughs> apart from, apart from last game. year by three, I forgot about that in Marseille because we were supposed to <laughs> score there at the end there. But look, a French team who we consistently beat in France apart from last year, um, the two times before that I was in the stadiums watching. Uh, and one thing that you notice about the French stadiums is the, those that crowd turns on a French team like that, okay? There will be yeah. a huge amount of pressure on the home team at the World Cup not to go out in the quarterfinals. Far more pressure than a South African team who's looking to bounce back. Um, I think you play a team like New Zealand, for South Africa, you play a team like New Zealand who know how to beat South Africa. Whether whether we beat them last time, you know, by record score in Twickenham, they beat us this year. They know how to beat us. They know the, the mystique of the box physicality isn't there for the New Zealanders because they've got the confidence that if they play their best game, they think they can beat us. The French, with key injuries to DuPont, uh, to Intermac, to Willemse, to all these players... If we can get under their skin, if we can dominate them physically and we can kick our goals, we win that game nine times out of ten. Yes. And I bloody said it early doors. I want France because we will beat them at home. They are loud. The crowd is loud. So that could also turn a ref. So we need... We could have, Barnes was the ref last time where he somehow lost. Oh, sorry. I've lost my... Have I lost the TMO there? I'm just going to come up with my own decision here. But I'd have a Barnes because <laughs> uh, the English don't like the French. But no, I'm not looking for favoritism or anything. I, I just think, and I hate blaming refs for things. So wipe that from the, from, from the script. Um, I just think, yeah, we'll beat France. We can beat France. They're not unbeatable. They're not, they're, well, they are beatable because they're not Ireland. Ireland's not lost a game in how long. Who are beatable, for God's sake. Um, so, so I guess what... I think we're both trying to say is despite 
us losing, um, I think, look, so if we're going to take more from that loss than Ireland are going to take from the win. And let me, let me explain ourselves. We are a team, this generation of, of players. Okay. So never mind the coaching, this generation of players is a team that has, has defined itself on results after being beaten. Okay. You look at as long ago as the 57 nil in New Zealand with the worst coaching staff in the world, New Zealand fly to South Africa the next day or the next, the next week. And we, and we play and we lose them in Newlands by two points, 34, 32, something like that. It might be slightly wrong. Okay. We've got games against New Zealand in Mount Smart this year. We bounce back and we beat them by, by, um, you know, a record amount, um, in the, in the series, Australia last year, we come back. We face them and we absolutely dominate them. We are a team that fosters aggression, fosters anger, and fosters revenge. And those guys are going to be hurting. They really are. You know, this whole thing about them being okay because we've lost before. Those guys are going to be hurting. They're going to come out against Tonga. They're going to do the business. And they're going to go absolutely hell for leather to make sure that the response from this loss is a World Cup victory. And whether that's Winning the World Cup, getting to the final, making the semis and doing a really good, you know, game. I, I don't know what being successful at this World Cup looks like other than winning it, but they're going to come out and they're going to give absolutely everything. But you can't lose anymore. So the same thing happened as in 2019. You cannot lose anymore. You lose one. That's okay. <laughs> you yep. lose two, you're done. <laughs> so oh, I'm still arms in the air angry, but um the boys can bounce back bring on the french um it, well we still need to get there so we just need to give tonga it's gonna be a good game physical because tonga is gonna come they're not gonna make it easy at all um i'm keen to see the ireland scotland game that's gonna be i, I think ireland <laughs> ireland are gonna win that game come on scotland are just yeah. shit, shit south africa <laughs> it's it's true um it's it's just gonna be an interesting game because we'll see what I, what tactics Ireland come up with. Actually, can I just touch on something? I know mm. we've almost done talking about the game. How how great was our lineouts in the beginning? There, pilfering left and oh, it wasn't only pilfering. It was one, I think we won throwing. seven seven of their line lineouts. Yeah, and they won. I think one of ours from which is a nonsense call. Um, we go back also, to the only yeah. thing they beat us on all day was breakdown. Yeah. Yes, I think they got two scrum penalties and they were fair. Um, France got like slipped five. in one, overextended. Yeah, France overextended in one. He's done it a couple of times now, Francie. Come on, buddy. Just come on. I'm not there, baby. I know tight head's the toughest. Tight head is the toughest position. In, as you need to be the strongest oak on the field because you've got to deal with 200 plus kilograms pushing against you um, every time you scrum. It's not fun. I did it. It wasn't 200 plus kilograms. Well, actually, probably was. And I'm um, not that big. Um, but yeah, um, I can calm down now because I've had a chat with you and it's, <laughs> but it. I was last night I was fuming, fuming. <laughs> can, can we a little touch, touch on what made my night, um, far worse. <laughs> uh, and that was the, um, the forfeits I had to do. And if anyone. Missed it. I lost last week in the game, and George gave me this whole thing where I had to roll a dice every 10 minutes, and each dice was a different thing, like a shot of alcohol, a teaspoon of hot sauce, uh, uh, sorry, tablespoon of hot sauce, teaspoon of cinnamon, dog biscuits, salt, vinegar. I'm so hungover, and I think mostly because of the dog biscuits and the cinnamon that I ate ruined my night. It was a lot of fun. Um, the story sh should still be live. Um, or I'll repost them in a couple of days. It was awful. And I'm going to fucking get you, boy. George, final words? Final words. Um, sorry to my neighbors and my family and everyone for shouting and my dog. And um, the booker need, will bounce back. They will. Um, and uh, we're going to win the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I love the confidence. <laughs> I agree with you. Let's get going. Please, guys, share the podcast. It helps us grow. You can find us on Spotify, on YouTube, on Apple, anywhere else. Um, visit me at, at SA Rugby Oak and George at Triton George on Instagram. Give us a like and a follow. 
and we'll see you all next week. 